Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I am David Goodwin. And over there is John Lewandowski. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker. 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, right across the street from Wilson Park. You can go test them out there. I believe Wednesdays and Saturdays they have open the skates if they don't have hockey. Rob, also, you can call them at 404-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. All righty. Um, today, the Nashville Predators took out the Vancouver Canucks in game six. It was win or go home. Well, we were at home, but, you know, this is just your temporary home. You 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 actually get to go on summer vacation. You get to go golfing. Get those things. Things I can't do. But I turned it over to John. <laughs> All right, so as you said, game six was tonight in Nashville versus the Predators and Canucks. Shots on goal in the first period, Nashville outshot Vancouver 6-5. to five. In the second period, Nashville outshot Vancouver 13-12. to 12. In the third period, Vancouver outshot Nashville 12-9. to nine. And in total, Vancouver outshoots Nashville 29-28. to 28. Uh, Vancouver was better on the face-off circle at 55.9% to Nashville's 44.1%. Vancouver was without a power play all game. However, Nashville had three, and they went 0 for 3. Um, Vancouver had eight penalty minutes to Nashville's two. Nashville out-hit Vancouver 25-22. to Nashville out-blocked Vancouver 24-16. to Vancouver had eight giveaways to Nashville, seven, and both teams had nine takeaways. On to the scoring. Scoring in the first period, nothing. Scoring in the second period, nothing. Which brings us to the third period. Scoring at the 1821 mark of the third period was Pius Suter for the Canucks, scoring his second of the postseason, assisted by Besser, his second, and Pedersen, his third. All righty. In net for the Canucks was Arthur Salvos. Uh, stop at 28 and 28. Perfect. Nothing really to go on there. In net for the Preds was UC Saros. He stopped 28 and 29, 96.68 percentage. If you're going to talk about it, if we, we want to talk about it, this was the best game that both teams played all series. Yeah. Um, Two games, actually... All but two games out of a six-game series were one-goal wins. All of them, except for two. The first two were uh, Vancouver won by two, we won by three. That's it. Every Vancouver wins 2-1, Vancouver wins 4-3, Nashville wins 2-1, Vancouver wins 1-0. This is nothing to hang your head on. These were tough games. We knew that we had to win one of the games at home. To move on. Right. We didn't do that. You know... Um, and and that's that's just the way it is. So um, for the guys coming back next year, leave the let this leave a bitter taste in your mouth. Use that for next year. Um, it's gonna be Edmonton and Vancouver in the second round. Yeah. Um, just underway is Dallas and. Vegas, I believe they are already underway. Oh. 
Yes, they are. It is. Nothing, nothing. It's after one. Yeah, after one. So, this is nothing to hang your head on. However, we said eventually we'd get to hanging your head on things. So, Atlanta! Your fans were calling on you. All right. Well, we're going to break down some of your best players. Um, if you could call them that. Um, you had one guy in your top five finish above even on the 500 spectrum. And in your top 10, you had one player. In your top 20, you have two players. It, 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 not good. Um, just not good. Um, so, uh, Jackson Pearson, number one on the season, 72 games played, four, 17 goals, 26 assists, 43 points, and a minus 28. Michael Miller had 41 points with 23 goals and 18 assists with 20, a minus 21. Uh, Reese Vitelli, uh, 48 games played, 41 points, 10 goals, 31 assists, minus 23. Cody Sylvester, 35 games played, 13 goals, 20 assists, 33 points, minus 7. Mitchell Fossier, the only plus in your top five. 27 games played, 10 goals, 23 assists, 33 points, plus 4. Luke Prokop, a Nashville Predators prospect, 55 games played, 5 goals, 23 assists, 28 points. That's actually not that bad for a rookie season, especially being on a team that wasn't really that good. And I'm not trying to dig at Atlanta, but they weren't any good this year at all. Yeah, it just wasn't their year at all. No, they 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 could not get momentum after that first month to save their life. Um, and he went minus seventeen. Carson Gasavage, which was an Admirals uh signee, uh forty three games played, six goals, twenty one assists, twenty seven points, minus nine. Ryan Cranford, seventy two games played, twenty six points, fourteen goals, twelve assists, minus twenty five. Alex Whelan, 23 games played, 14 goals, 9 assists, 23 points, minus 2. Uh, Michael Marcheson, uh, 58 games played, 12 goals, 10 assists, 22 points, minus 5. Robert Castillo, 40 games played, 7 goals, 11 assists, 18 points, minus 24. Jack Matier, 52 games played, 6 goals, 11 assists, 17 points, minus, tw minus 4. Here's minus 4. Brendan Hoffman, 40 games played, 7 goals, 8 assists, 15 points, minus 9. Nolan Burke, Predators prospect, uh, 47 games played, 5 goals, 10 assists, 15 points, minus, set, minus 18. Griffin Luce, Admiral Sidey, 63 games played, 3 goals, 9 assists, 12 points, minus 9. Mitch Walla, Walensky, 49 games played, 7 goals, 4 assists, 12, 11 points, minus 20. Devin Butter, 33 games played, 5 goals, 6 assists, 11 points, 63 penalty minutes, and four, uh, minus 14. Jacob Graves, 45 games played, 1 goal, 10 assists, 188, 118 penalty minutes, minus 12. Zach Yoder, defenseman. 63 games played, 3 goals, 7 assists, 10 points, minus 15. Blake Avenues, 43 games played, 1 goal, 8 assists, 9 points, 1, a uh, plus 1. That He's 20th at 9 points, and that's a plus 1. Carson Dinamani, uh, 12 games played, 3 goals, 3 assists, 6 points, plus 3. At Evan Doherty, 25 games played. Two goals, four assists, six points, minus seven. Parker Coyne, ten goal, games played, five goals, minus six. Aiden Dale, oh God. Gronjay, ten games played, one goal, four assists, five points, minus, uh, he was actually a plus four. Oh boy. Dylan Carabia, 68 games played. One goal, four assists, five points, minus 31. Jay Powell, 35 games played, two goals, two assists, four points, minus 10. 
Jake Jake Willits, 12 games played, three assists, minus six. Josh Boyer, eight games played, a goal, an assist, and a minus two. Braden Dakema, 12 games played, two assists, that's it, minus five. Seth Benson, five games played, one goal, minus five. Brandy Florent, what five games played, one assist. Minus two. Dylan Venderesh. Eight games played. One assist. Minus four. The rest of these guys have no points, so just gonna get, I'm gonna say just their my plus minus. So uh Joel Widmar, three games played, nothing. Even across the board, nothing. Matt Walensky or Olsky. Uh four games played, minus two. Alex Cohen, 13 games played, made minus four. Uh Connor Kaspari, 16 games played, minus six. And Spencer Kennedy, 21 games played, minus one. In net for Atlanta this year, there were quite a few. So let's get in it. All right. Your best goalie was Cole Cece. He had two games played with a 4.1 goals against average, but he had the best save percentage out of anybody. He went one and one with a 90.6 save percentage. If that's your best, oh boy. Um, Tyler Harmon, uh, 13 games played. He had a 3.21 goals against average with a 90.1 save percentage. With four wins, eight losses. <laughs> then third was Gustav Davis Greggles, who was probably your rock this year. Uh, 34 games played with a 3.44 goals against average with a 90 flat save percentage with 11 wins, 19 losses, and three shutouts. Uh, Brad Perron was uh, there for 17 games. He had a uh, 3.8. Yeah, it was a 3.83 goals against average with an 89.9 save percentage. Uh, he went 4, 10, and 2. Uh, then Josh Boyko, he goes 13 games, 3.9 or 3.39 goals against average with an 89.5 save percentage with uh, three wins, seven losses, and a um, game that went out over time. Uh, Ryan Kennedy had a 3.00 goals against average with a 88.9 save percentage. He had a total of eight saves. That will do it for the Atlanta Gladiators. Your captains left are Jackson Pearson. He was an assistant captain. That is it. Head coach Derek Nesbitt, who I would not be surprised if he does not come back. Um, Eric Neely, Liam, uh, yeah, and Eric Neely. Um, your franchise owners are Alex Campbell and Anson Carter. Um, Um, this year they finished 23, 45, and 4. Um, they were at 50 points. Um, they had, uh, 187 goals for versus 264 goals against. Um, they did not make the playoffs. They, uh, finished, I believe, last in the league. Oh, God. Um, then we have the, we're on to the Nashville Predators. The Nashville Predators this regular season, uh, scoring leading the leagues or the team scoring was led by Phil Forsberg. He had 48 goals, 46 assists with 94 points. Um, in the playoffs, he had six games played with two goals, four assists, six points and a plus minus of zero in the regular season. He had a plus minus of 16. Gustav Nyquist had 81 games played, 23 goals, 52 assists for 75 points. 
Um, in the playoffs, he went six games played, one goal, three assists for four points, minus three. Alexander Carrier had... Oh, let's go here in the regular season. Uh, Roman Yossi was second in the team of points with 82 games played, 23 goals, 62 assists for 85 points, and a plus 12. He also had six games played with one goal, two assists, and a plus one in the playoffs. Oh, I'm going to have to really speed this up. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly had 69 points. Uh, Tommy Novak had 45. Uh, Luke Evangelista had 39. Colton Sisters had 35. Ryan McDonough had 32. Kiefer Sherman had 27. Cole Smith had 23. Michael McCarron had 22 points. Um, Phil Tomasino had 20 points. Alexander Carey had 20 points. Mark Jankowski had 15. Tyson Berry had 15. Yakov Trenton, who ended up being traded, had 14 um, at the time. Uh, Jeremy Lausanne had 14. Uh, Cody Glass had 13. Dante Fabro had 13. Yusuf Arson had 12. Jason Zucker in his 18 games here had 17 points. Or 17 points. 7 points. Luke Shed 7 points. Uh, Spencer Statsky in 20 games since I'll uh, call up this year of four points. Anthony Bolivier, three points. Del Geizo, three points. Foody, three points. Dennis Garyanov, two points. Samuel Fujimo, one point. Pierre Anderson Dolan and Igor Afanasiev go scoreless. In net for the Preds, the best one with the same percentage, Yaroslav Askarov. He started, he played in two games. He had a 1.1 or a 1.47 goals against average. With a 94.3 save percentage, he had one win. Um, no losses. Um, Kevin Lankinen, he had a 2.82 goals against average with a 90.8 save percentage with 11 and 6 with one shutout. Um, then UC Saros had 64 games played with uh, 2.86 goals against average with a 90.6 save percentage. And 35 wins, 24 losses, 5 overtime losses, and 3 shutouts. In the playoffs, he went five, six games played. He had a 2.21 goals against average with a 89.2 save percentage. The Preds this offseason have to sign, and I'm just going to go off this list. We will break this down in a week or so. But Jason Zucker, Anthony, Anthony Bolivier, Yusuf Harsaned, Jared Anderson Dolan and Kiefer Sherwood are all free agents. Whether they're unrestricted or not, they are considered unsigned. Tyson Berry, Alexander Carrier, and Spencer Statsny are free agents. RFA for Statsny, uh, Dolan, and Parsonen. In the goalie area, it is Lankinen and Gustav Davis Greggles, who is an RFA. Anything you would like to add in our seven minutes that we have left? No, I mean, it, 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 in my opinion, it's been an amazing year for Nashville. Um, from going from the start of the season to where we finished, yes, it's not how we would have liked to finish. But even being in the playoffs and going on the amazing point streak, the run, uh, you have nothing to hang your head over. I mean, I, I couldn't have imagined, I'll admit it, that they would have ended up this way at the end of the season and making the playoffs from the start of the season. I just didn't see it, and I'm proud of them, and I think they played their hearts out this year. All righty. So um, with that, um, you know, uh, I, 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 I agree with them not seeing you too. <laughs> uh -huh. And 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 wherever the Preds play for the where you uh, two is never allowed to be played in the Preds arena ever again. Uh -huh. Um, but uh. Uh, 
Yeah, this was a tough one. Um, it would be interesting to see where everything lands now that Hughes and McCarr are moving on in the playoffs. And, you know, Bruno and, and, and Yossi are going golfing, for lack of a better term. But, yeah. you know, um, what these guys did and what Bruno did in his first season, uh, Brunette, it, you did an amazing job. Um, I did not think that this team was a playoff team coming into the season. It, I just didn't. Um, I, I honestly, uh, you know, it's tough to kind of come up with the words here because, you know, I was I was ready for for you know the ads trying kind of get some help here. But at the same time, um, I, I kind of wanted Nashville to move on to. Yeah. Um, this is really tough. Um, so looking at it from that perspective, um, I'm proud of what they've done. Uh, on to tomorrow now, I guess. Um, right. You know, the Admirals play tomorrow, so on to tomorrow. Tomorrow's another day. You know, Preds fans, you're more than welcome to come jump on this bandwagon. Uh, there's plenty of hockey to still be played. So, yeah. I thank you all for watching. This has been From Milwaukee to Nashville, brought to you by Hockey Walker. For Daniel Goodwill and John Lujowski, signing off. And see you guys tomorrow.